here at Torbay Hospital and very fortunate to have with us Kyle who is uh, responsible for enabling innovation to happen, one of a whole team of people here making some fascinating developments. Kyle, welcome and thank you very much for coming. Um, could you tell us a little bit about the role you play and innovation in the context of a hospital? Certainly. Um, I started my foundation training here two years ago um, and when I started I realised that the junior doctors that were working here really weren't being tapped into. We were always asked to um, do projects, do audits, and we have to do these for our e-portfolios to get sign-off. But I, I was finding that we didn't have any support. Um, we didn't really know how to do the projects. We didn't know really the difference between audit, and quality improvement, and research. Um, so what I did is, with the help of a few other people, I set up a group called iTorch, which was Innovators of Torbay Clinical Healthcare. Mm. Um, and the aim of this was to try and tap into the experiences and the qualities that the junior doctors have, because we realised that the junior doctors have a very, a very good outsider's perspective of what goes on within a hospital. They're bright-eyed, and they have to do projects. Mm -hmm. So we thought, well, why not try and make make the project something worthwhile both for them and for the trust? So we we set this group together and. What we, what we now do is we offer mentoring to junior doctors when they come into the hospital. So we teach them about quality improvement, we teach them about how to measure projects effectively. Um, we have a, a pro forma, which is a set of questions that, they, that, we, that we ask them, and they can take away, fill it in in their own time, and it really gets them thinking, what is the project that I'm trying to do? What is it I'm trying to measure? How am I going to make this sustainable? And we find that if trainees fill this out properly, they actually get a bit of a head start. Um, they can do it in their own time, they can think about it, they can chat about it in groups, so that when they do have that spare hour or that spare 20 minutes while they're at work, they can crack on and do the project and really make some good headway. Because the other problem we found is that the doctors are all 100% clinical, they don't get study time to do the project, so the majority of the work happens in all 20 minutes here and there, as well as in their own time, in the evenings and on the weekends. Um, and to fit in with this, uh, myself and the others in the group offered mentoring. So once once the trainees had had their teaching, uh, they filled in their performers, we meet with them at times as convenient to them as possible and try and give them a short, sharp, have you thought about this, have you thought about that? Yes, we think this project will work. Maybe we could do things a different way. And we, we basically just try to guide them mm. to get the most out of their projects. And and what we've, what we've really found is that if a trainee has a real... If, if the training is infused by the project, it tends to be more successful. Mm. So some of the most successful projects were around um, improving the working conditions for the F1 doctors out of hours, so uh, making them more efficient, meaning they have to transfer between wards less, less inappropriate jobs put on the task list, task list, list. <laughs> and, um, and you know, the, you can see there's a, real, there's a real desire to improve the system mm -hmm. when it's something which will impact positively on them. And of course the repercussions are, it helps the trust as well. So, so your role is very much a sort of innovation coach, you're helping them do stuff for themselves, but yeah. also I guess building into their conception of what it means to be a doctor, the idea that innovation can be a part of that. Well absolutely, um, and because the, the, the new doctors that come through now, they're all very technology savvy, they all have iPhones, they all have mm. Blackberry computers, so they expect that when they come to a hospital, that's what they're going to be using. And then they go back to using paper-based systems and having to walk <laughs> white slips around places. And you can just tell they don't understand why the working environment isn't the same, isn't using the same technology as their social environment. And there's a real, there's a real urgency to try and make the two match up, if you see what I mean. Yeah. And that's a, a fascinating enabling approach. Um, <coughs> what have been the, uh, the challenges to you in actually making that happen? I think there's quite a there's quite a few challenges in there. Um, trying to trying to give the junior doctors the time to complete the project is still a big fact. I mean, they are still expected to be 100% clinical and do all this portfolio and curriculum work on the outside. And for some rotations, it is very 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 busy, and they can they can only spare 20 minutes here, half an hour there. And as much as we try, we can only do so much with that short amount of time. Um, I think it would be useful, well, it would be useful as well if there's some clarity from um, some of the colleges at like the Royal College of Physicians, what it is that they actually expect of the doctors, because the terms 
audit and quality improvement tend to be thrown around. They're two very distinct things. And I do think there's a lack of clarity there. Um, I think the problem, another problem really, is that as long as you have a project, you can just tick the box. Mm. I think it's too easy just to do something very simple, like a notes audit in an afternoon. How many sets of notes on the ward have a date and a time? 80%, fantastic, tick the box. But that's no good to anyone. Mm. You know, really, it's, it's trying to get the, get the junior doctors infused. I mean, you know, one, of the, one of the other problems, I suppose, is not everyone wants to engage, and that's fair enough. Most of the people who come through, very keen, really want to get infused by it, and others are happy to just ramble on, you know, really focus on the clinical work, and, and haven't perhaps got the mindset for it, or haven't realised the potential they have for quality improvement, which is something that we can hopefully work on next year. So, if I became the Christmas fairy and I could grant you any wish, mm. as somebody who clearly wants to promote innovation in the world that you're operating in, um, what, what's the magic wish you'd like granted? How could you really get some traction on this promotion of innovation? Well, I'd love, there's a few things. I'd, I'd love to see the junior doctors being more involved in the wider hospital projects. Um, people talk about implementing e-prescribing, e-requesting. Um, and until we got involved, that was all happening in the background without actually consulting the junior doctors. Well, they're going to be the ones actually mm -hmm. prescribing. So if we're going to have a system, why not get the junior doctors to prescribe it? Why not get the people who are actually going to be using all these systems to have a look at how they could improve things? 24-7 working, the junior doctors are embedded in the rotor. Why don't we ask a few juniors, you know, could you come up with a rotor? What do you think would work? What do you think junior doctors would be happy with using? I think that would be very useful. It's, it's integrating the junior doctors into maybe non-clinical teams, IT teams, managerial executive teams. Mm. Um, I think it would be fantastic if the pro forma that we have, this iTorch pro forma, and the methodology that we're using, if that could be adopted further afield, I think it would be brilliant as well. But we're quite fortunate here because of the support that we have for the juniors. Um, and I'm, I'm not, obviously, I can't guarantee that everywhere else would have that, would have the, the open culture that we have here, but I'm sure a lot of places would benefit from having some type of structure to help the junior doctors out. And of course, giving them some more time off the wards. Sounds good. Be a bonus. Now, one last question. Um, you're an innovation manager. Your role is partly to help enable others to actually innovate. Mm. Um, we're interested in advice and guidance from anyone we can get it from about how that process works. And um, if I were to ask Uncle Kyle for his, um, his words of wisdom, what might you pass on to someone who's newly appointed in the role of being an innovation manager? Uh, I'd probably say for everything that works, there's about 25 things that won't work and you'll be banging your head off the table um, for the majority of the time, but it's worth it for when that one thing comes up. We've hit many problems along the way um, and you just have to keep ploughing on. Um, and if, if your concept's good, if you've really thought about it, you do have to drive it on and just accept that there are going to be people who don't share the same mindset of you, who are maybe stuck in their ways, if that's the right way of saying it but who are a bit more resistant to change. And you're never going to get anyone on board, but hopefully your results will show that you've, you've, made, you've made a change. I think they are doing here in Torbay. Carl, thank you very much for Good your time. Thanks. Thank you.